good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, three years ago, I had the intentions of leaving school, and I was planning on securing a job in a warehouse or a factory. Today, I stand before you as a fresher student at Trinity College, where I've just begun my uh, degree of law and politics. My life has completely and utterly changed, and I barely recognise the person I once was. Now I'm the cool kid sitting at the Greens in Trinity College. <laughs> I'm on this stage because of an organisation many of you may have heard of, called Future Voices Ireland. It is because of them my pattern life has changed so much. And it is because of them I am so confident enough to stand in a room in front of 500 people and proudly share my story. I'd like to talk to you today about what my experience was growing up and share my story. And I'd like to draw on the experiences of other people from Future Voices that I'm very lucky to call my friends and peers. I would like to talk to you tonight about what it is to be like in my area and my experiences in the education system specifically and how I feel I fit into this world and how I'd like to change it. First of all, I want to tell you about what it's like to be a teenager in my area. I live in an area called Sherry Orchard in Ballyferm. It's not the nicest place in Dublin. But my experience is much more positive than others from Future Voices and in the area. Some have witnessed drug deals taking place close to their home. Others have had to step around syringes in their park. And the local parks are not safe to be in alone. However, this does not mean that everyone in this area is bad. As there is good and bads in these areas, I wouldn't like you to get the impression that it's all bad because that's where negative stereotype come, uh, neg sorry, that's what leads to negative stereotyping of a lot of these areas where the young people from Future Voices come from. All of us in Future Voices live in neg negatively perceived areas. We all attend DESH schools, and I can say on behalf of the group in Future Voices that we believe we do not get the same level of education as those who come from a school who is not labeled deprived. Some of, us have been, some of us have even been denied the right to sit higher level subjects because of a lack of money in the budget. Others have suffered a lack of guidance and counselling supports. Many like myself, who have suffered from dyslexia, have been denied specialist supports and it is clear that this has a massive impact in terms of our opportunity and on our choices. At the moment, the progression rate in Ballyferma and Dublin 10 is less than 16%. And in my own home, uh, in my own school, more than half of my year left education by 16. I can count on the number, I can count the number on my hands of people advancing to university. As far as I'm aware, I'm the only one to go to Trinity College. But my path to Trinity was not a traditional one. This time two years ago, things were very bleak and couldn't have been more different. I'd received my, rece I've received my Leaving Cert results in which I'd worked incredibly hard for, only to find that they were not what I had expected. And it did not give me the chance to progress to university. I was very low, and I wasn't aware of any other options. The boss, as I call her, Miss Mairead Healy, from Future Voices, was hounding me for days, calling me, texting me, emailing me, but I was too low and embarrassed to respond. She kept at me, and eventually she got in touch. After that, Future Voices had arranged for me to meet a specialist in the Department of Education, in which Mairead grilled the poor man constantly with questions as usual. Eventually we found a course that suited me, the Trinity Access Programme in Liberties. If I do well on this course, I'd get a chance to take a place in Trinity College. What seemed like a bleak situation previously suddenly became totally changed. Now I had hoped that my dream was not over. This changed everything. How I got into TAP was a bit of an unusual case. I applied and two days later I got an email from someone in TAP asking me to send on all these documents and I only had 24 hours to do so. Me being mean, me being me, I had them sent within the hour. Never have I been so glad to own my own scanner. A few days passed and we were in late August. I rang Liberties and a man answered the phone and told me that there was interviews in the morning, come down. I went in the following morning and explained the situation to the principal. She looked at me a bit weird because she told me that no man works in reception and they have no idea who told me to come in that day. 
I like to think fate answered the phone that day. <laughs> Nevertheless, they're amazing people, so they let me do uh, an interview. I was successful and I got a place on the course. Fast forward the clock a year. I graduated top of my class in Liberties with 10 distinctions, the only student to do so. I had thrived on, liberal arts, on the liberal arts course, made loads of friends, and was even elected the class rep. The most astounding realization I had that year was that had I have listened to the system and just rolled over, I wouldn't be going to college. I, wouldn't, I would think that education wasn't for me, and I wouldn't be following my dreams. I think this is part of a bigger picture. There needs to be more done to ensure that everyone has the same chances and opportunities in life to succeed, to realise their dreams, and to try and make something of themselves. This brings me on to where I see myself in the world. Before I started Future Voices, I felt no one listened to me. That I wasn't important. I was just another face in the crowd, another number. Now things have changed for me personally, but I still think young people do not have a voice in general. Future Voices made me believe I had a voice. To give you a few examples, I've, how I've been able to use my voice. My first and particular interest, in case you haven't guessed, is education and inequalities. And I was given the opportunity to directly address the Minister for Education uh, for Inequality in Ireland and give a 10 minute presentation to him on the education system and how it needs to be reformed. I'm also currently in the making of a documentary for RTE in which I, I interviewed the Minister for Education in my own home, one on one, in which I told her of my experience and, my ex and the inequalities I've seen in the education system. I was also one of the recent organ I was also an organizer of a recent TEDx conference, a highly successful event featuring a lineup of well-known and successful speakers, each given TED Talks, which was entirely organized by the young people of Future Voices, and myself and one of my peers, Diana, even hosted the event. Oh, wrong picture. <laughs> Out of order. That's the one. But, as the social entrepreneur's slogan goes, dream big, act now, change Ireland. It's something Future Voices is always trying to do. Future Voices had a big dream. It was to decide, it was to, decide to break a world record at the event for the most number of selfies taken in three minutes. Speaking of which, I think it might be a good time to get one. <laughs> Technical difficulties on my phone, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but these are just a few examples of what we've been able to do through Future Voices. Particularly in the last year, since Future Voices received the award from SEI, uh, it meant that Maraid was able to leave her job and work full time for us. And our management style dropped from a change to drop and go, which means that as soon as we finish one project, we move straight on to the next. So Future Voices has launched a new project this year, known as Youth Elect. There we go. Which, as a young person, I'm extremely excited by. Uh, what I would like to get across tonight is the fact that when pe young people are given an opportunity to be heard, they will take it and do amazing things with it. I can honestly say that each and every one of the young people in Future Voices are changed for the better. We aren't afraid to dream big. We feel we have been heard. We have found our voices. Future Voices has instilled us with hope for a better future. Future Voices hasn't just helped me find my voice. It has helped others. And the students in Future Voices believe that you can achieve anything, regardless of where you're from. So as I begin my day, getting out of bed in Ballyfermot, the hangout by the pitches and the greens in Trinity College, I feel I belong to both communities and show just how far I've come. Now I walk with my head high, and because of Future Voices Ireland, I'm in a different place altogether, but I'm glad to be in that place. And I just want to say a few really quick thank yous. Uh, thank you to Andrew Kyo, I don't know if he's here, for getting me ready for tonight. Thanks to Andrea for the amazing vocal training. Thanks to the SEI team for putting on this amazing event, and Maria for being so patient with me. And thanks to Social Entrepreneurs Ireland, for believing in future voices and for future voices believing in me. Thank you.